Hi everyone, my name is Bob Wolatka and I am a trainer here at US Realty Training. Today we're covering 25 questions you will likely see on your Michigan real estate exam. Now, if you would like more questions like these, US Realty Training provides a state exam prep package in Michigan that comes with practice exams, terminology flashcards, video explanations, and an ebook study guide, and even more. If you're interested, the link for that is in the description and in the comments below. With that said, let's get started and are you ready for the first question? Which of the following statements is true in Michigan regarding commissions? Always watch out for true or false or accept or those are key words to be careful about. A. Only the procuring cause is entitled to compensation. B. Compensation to cooperating brokers is over and above compensation to the listing broker. C. Michigan law prohibits service provision agreements from being canceled to avoid compensating the listing broker. Or D. The cooperating broker's compensation is negotiated between the listing broker and the client. The correct answer is C. Michigan law prohibits service provision agreements from being canceled to avoid compensating the listing broker. The Michigan Supreme Court's procuring cause doctrine prevents strategic terminations of an agent's authority provided by the service provision agreement from depriving an agent of a commission. A licensee is entitled to a commission if his or her work results in a sale even if the agent's authority is terminated before the deal is closed. What is the purpose of a protection clause? A. To prevent the client from delaying the sell until after the listing expiration date to avoid paying the commission. B. To protect the seller from being charged any compensation after the service provision agreement has expired. C. To assure cooperating brokers receive all earned commission for participating in the property sale. Or D, to protect the buyer from compensating his or her broker for any property purchased after the expiration of the buyer service provision agreement. The correct answer is A, to prevent the client from delaying the sale until after the listing expiration date to avoid paying the commission. Near the expiration date of a service provision agreement, one party to a prospective purchase agreement might suggest that the parties delay the sale until, uh, until the expiration of the service provision agreement to avoid paying the real estate commission. To avoid this situation, many service provision agreements include a broker protection clause, which provides that compensation is owed to the broker if, for any agreed time period after the expiration of the agreement, a sale is made to someone with whom the listing broker has negotiated. Escrow funds are dispersed according to A, the escrow instructions, B, the closing statement, C, the closing agent, or D, Michigan statutes. The correct answer is A, the escrow instructions. The essence of the escrow instructions is that the buyer or lender authorizes the seller and any lien holders to be paid and the seller authorizes a deed to be delivered to the buyer. A key thing here is escrow funds and it's the escrow instructions. While John was employed by Bob, John earned a commission for selling the Parker property. However, John terminated his employment with Bob and became affiliated with Sue. Bob is now refusing to pay John the earned commission. A. Bob has the right to refuse to pay John since John didn't collect the commission prior to terminating his employment with Bob. C. Bob should pay John, but the law does not require him to do so after John's termination. C. If Bob pays John, Bob can face disciplinary actions for compensating a licensee who is now affiliated with another broker. Or D. 
Bob can pay John without facing any disciplinary actions for compensating a licensee who is now affiliated with another broker. The correct answer here is D. Bob can pay John without facing any disciplinary actions for compensating a licensee who is now affiliated with another broker. If an individual earned commissions or other income while employed by a real estate broker, it is not grounds for disciplinary action for that broker to pay those commissions or income to that individual, regardless of whether that individual is now employed by another real estate broker or is no longer licensed. Under civil rights law, which of the following is legal? A. Steve refuses to accept an offer from an unmarried couple with children. B. Steve publishes an advertisement that states the property is not available to families with children. C. Steve is renting a room in his own home and refuses to show the room to single men. Or D. Steve is selling his home and offers a discounted sale price to families with children. The correct answer is C. Steve is renting a room in his own home and refuses to show the room to single men. The Elliot Larson Civil Rights Act does not apply to someone who is renting a room in a single family dwelling if the lessor or a member of the lessor's immediate family resides in the dwelling. Which of the following parties must provide a seller's disclosure statement to the buyer? A. Citizens Bank selling a property they acquired through foreclosure. B. Tom transferring ownership of the family home to his ex-wife Sarah as ordered by their divorce agreement. C. Joe selling his house to his best friend Jim. Or D. Shane as a contractor selling a house he has just finished building? The correct answer is C. Joe selling his house to his best friend Jim. The seller in a residential transaction must deliver to the buyer a seller's disclosure statement providing information known by the seller concerning the property. Exemptions to that requirement include foreclosure sales, transfers between spouses as a result of divorce settlements, and contractors selling newly constructed houses. Phil is selling his single family home and has provided a seller's disclosure statement to the buyer. In it, he stated the heating system was working properly. Two days after he provided the statement, the heating system broke down. The repairman said he could repair the system, but it would need to be replaced very soon. What is Phil required to do with this new information to avoid a violation of disclosure law? A. Phil is required to contact the buyer and verbally explain the situation. B. Phil must amend the disclosure statement and resubmit it to the buyer. C. Phil must replace the heating system prior to closing. Or D. Phil is not required to do anything with the information since the heating system was working when he provided the disclosure. The correct answer is D. Phil is not required to do anything with the information since the heating system was working when he provided the disclosure. If information becomes inaccurate after delivery of the statement, it is not considered a violation of the disclosure law to amend the disclosure. What action relieves the property seller of liability concerning the condition of an accessible portion of the property? A, the buyer having a qualified expert inspect the property. B, the buyer not having an inspection performed. C, the seller refusing to allow an inspection of the property. Or D, the seller failing to provide a disclosure statement. The correct answer is A, the buyer having a qualified expert inspect the property. A prospective buyer can request a report or opinion by a qualified expert. 
The information provided will relieve the seller of any further duties regarding that item unless the seller has knowledge of a known defect or condition that contradicts the information contained in the report or opinion. Which of the following statements is false regarding the seller's disclosure statement? Remember, watch out for false, true, accept, all of that. A. Statement from the seller is required to use a specific seller's disclosure as set by statutes. B. If a particular system is in good working order, the seller does not need to include that system or its condition on the disclosure form. C. The disclosure form asks whether or not there are any pending litigation regarding the property. Or D. The disclosure form includes questions on common ownership. Remember, we're looking for false. The correct answer is B. If a particular system is in good working order, the seller does not need to include that system or its condition on the disclosure form. The statute sets forth a specific seller's disclosure statement form that the seller is required to use. Appliances, systems, and services are listed on the form. For each item, the seller must indicate whether it is in working order, unknown, or that information is not available. The Michigan law that governs property condition disclosures is A. The Property Condition Disclosure Act B. The Property Hazard Act C. The Property Disclosure Act or D. The Seller's Disclosure Act. The correct answer is D. The Seller's Disclosure Act. The Seller's Disclosure Act specifically requires a residential seller to disclose property conditions to a buyer. Which document contains deed restrictions for the HOA or Homeowners Association? A. Bylaws. B. Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions. C. Articles of Incorporation. Or D. Rules and Regulations. The correct answer is B. Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions or as we commonly call them, CCNRs, are deed restrictions recorded in the county where the HOA operates. They set forth what homeowners can and cannot do with their property. This type of sales prospect is calm and gives no indication of whether or not she is interested. Is it A, a glad hander, B, methodological type, C, silent prospect, or D, timid type? The correct answer is C, silent prospect. A silent or calm prospect shows little, if any, emotion or interest and should be dealt with by asking leading questions. Legal action as a result of antitrust violations must be brought within A, one year, B, six months, C, four years, or D, five years? The correct answer is C, four years. Antitrust issues are governed by federal statutes, such as the Sherman Act and by the Michigan Antitrust Reform Act. Any action for violations must be brought within four years. John is selling his property that is located half a mile from his neighbor's farm. What disclosure is John required to make to his buyer? A, environmental hazard disclosure. B, farm located within one mile of property disclosure. C, livestock disclosure. Or D, no farm related disclosure is required. The correct answer is D, no farm-related disclosure is required. A seller of real property located within one mile of farm is not required to, but may voluntarily make a disclosure that the farm is located within one mile of the property being purchased. What type of property is affected by the 2010 changes to the Dodd-Frank Act? A, owner-occupied residential property, 
B, vacant land, C, commercial property, or D, investment property? The correct answer is A, owner-occupied residential property. The Dodd-Frank Act of 2010 made substantial changes to residential seller financing. The changes do not apply to vacant land, commercial property, or rental property, or property used for investment purposes. A client revokes an exclusive right to sell listing two months prior to expiration. The reason stated, the client is too busy to meet with the agent. In this case, A, the client is criminally liable for negligence, B, the client may be liable for commission and marketing expenses, C, the agent may sue the client for specific performance even if no customer has been located, or D, the agent must accept the revocation without the possibility of damage recovery. The correct answer is B, the client may be liable for commission and marketing expenses. With an exclusive right to sell listing, if the property sells during the term of the revoked listing, the client is liable for the commission. If the property does not sell, the client is liable for the broker's actual costs. A protection period clause in an exclusive listing provides that A. The owner is protected from all liabilities arising from the agent's actions performed within the agent's scope of duties. B. The agent has a claim to a commission if the owner sells or leases to a party within a certain time following the listing's expiration. C. Agents are entitled to extend a listing agreement's term if a transaction is eminent. Or D. An owner is not liable for a commission if a prospective customer delays in completing an acceptable offer. The correct answer is B. The agent has a claim to a commission if the owner sells or leases to a party within a certain time following the listing's expiration. Many listings include a protection clause stating that for a certain period of time after expiration, the owner is liable for the commission if the property sells to a party or leases to a party that the broker procured, unless the broker has since listed the property with another broker. Ad valorem taxes are based on A, the replacement value of property, B, the assessed value of property, C, the millage value of property, or D, the broker's estimate of value. The correct answer is B, the assessed value of property. General property taxes are levied on an ad valorem basis, meaning that they are based on the assessed value of the property. Assessed value is determined according to state law, usually by a county or township assessor or appraiser. Which of the following activities is not allowed under the Real Estate Settlements and Procurements Act, or RESPA? A, a broker having any business relationship with an insurance company that is involved in the broker's transaction. B, a broker pre-qualifying a buyer for a mortgage loan. C, a lender requiring a deposit from a borrower for a tax and insurance escrow account. Or D, a lender paying a fee to a broker for referring a broker to the lender. The correct answer is D, a lender paying a fee to a broker for referring a borrower to a lender. RESPA prohibits the payment of fees as part of a real estate settlement when no services are actually rendered. This prohibition includes referral fees for such services as title searches, title insurance, mortgage loans, appraisals, credit reports, inspections, surveys, and legal services. What is an REO? A. A property sold in a short sale. B. A property scheduled to go into foreclosure. C. A property bought by the bank at a foreclosure sale. Or D. A property owned by a real estate licensee. The correct answer is C. A property bought by the bank at a foreclosure sale.
When the property is sold at foreclosure sale and is bought by the lien holder instead of a third party, the property is held on its book as real estate owned or REO. To minimize the risk of violating fair housing laws, a licensee should a refuse to use terms that refer to or describe any of the classes of persons protected by the laws, b avoid working in neighborhoods that are predominantly occupied by a single ethnic group, c make discriminatory or derogatory remarks in conversation only, never in writing, or d give better service to members of a protected class than is standard for other clients or customers? The correct answer is A, refuse to use terms that refer to or describe any of the classes of persons protected by the laws. Before entering into a listing agreement, a licensee should explain that it is necessary to comply with fair housing laws and obtain the potential client's acknowledgement and agreement. The client should make it clear that the agent will reject the use of terms indicating race, religion, creed, color, national origin, sex, handicap, age, or familial status to describe prospective buyers. Such terms should be avoided in conversation as well as in advertising. What are tenant improvements? A. Modifications to a rental suite to conform to a tenant's usage specifications. B. Marketing programs that yield a higher quality of tenant. C. Increased revenue resulting from a rise in rental rates or D, increased occupancy resulting from a population increase in the market area? The correct answer is A, modifications to a rental suite to conform to a tenant's usage specifications. Alterations made specifically for certain tenants are called build-outs or tenant improvements. The work may involve merely painting and re-carpeting a rental space or erecting new walls and installing special electrical or other systems. An agency disclosure must include A, a termination date, B, the licensee's duties, C, the services to be performed, or D, the seller's reason for selling. The correct answer is B, the licensee's duties. In residential transactions, licensees must use an agency disclosure to disclose the types of agency relationship available and the licensee's duty in each type of relationship. What entity determines the acceptable agricultural and management practices by which a farm must conform? A, the Attorney General. B, the Michigan Farm Bureau. C, the Federal Commission on Farming, or D, the Michigan Commission of Agriculture? The correct answer, D, the Michigan Commission of Agriculture. A farm cannot be found to be a public or private nuisance if it conforms to a generally accepted agricultural and management practices as determined by the Michigan Commission of Agriculture. Billy belongs to a farmer's group consisting of neighboring farmers. All of the farmers sell their produce to the general public and pro produce markets throughout the state. There is one farmer, though, that the group doesn't like, so they've decided to block him from selling his produce. They've gone to the produce markets and convinced them not to buy produce from this farmer. They've also fixed their prices lower than what the other farmer can afford to use. Have these farmers broken the law? And if so, which law? A, yes, the Michigan Right to Farm Act. B, yes, the Michigan Antitrust Reform Act. C, no, they're simply being competitive. Or D, no, there is no law that covers these actions. The correct answer is B, yes, the Michigan Antitrust Reform Act. Under the Sherman Act and the Michigan Antitrust Reform Act, any contract 
combination or conspiracy between two or more persons in restraint of or to monopolize trade or commerce is illegal in Michigan and subject to criminal and civil penalties. Specifically, controlling, fixing, or maintaining prices is unlawful. And that covers 25 questions on the real estate exam. If you want more exam help videos like this, then I would recommend you watch the video right here. Also, you can purchase the state exam prep package, which is linked up below. We'll see you next time.